I know. It has been a while. But I've been playing excessive amounts of the 2.0 patch on Diablo 4's PTR. And we've come up with easily the best build I've ever played in Diablo 4 up to this point. The Blight Rift Necromancer. And I just can't wait to show it with you guys. So I'm not wasting any time. Let's get into it. Now before we get too deep, there will be some gameplay happening, weaving in and out of this video above. That gameplay is not the build exactly. I just wanted to give you guys an impression of what it's probably going to look like and feel like, but the damage is going to be way better in this version. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have some tech that we needed uh, on PTR until the PTR ended. Uh, but yeah, just to give you a feel for what the gameplay looks like, that is, a, I think, a pit level 90. It's doing pretty well. It's doing okay. It's got good damage, but the new tech we discovered uh, is really going to take this thing to the next level. Now, one of the great things about this build, as you can see, here's my full character plan, and you can see the whole character planner in the, in the link below. Not a single mythic unique required, which is a great thing, especially for a, a build that you're going to be starting with in any season. And now this might actually surprise you. There's a lot of layers to this build, so I'm going to try to go pretty slow and in-depth into each one. So I apologize in advance that this video goes pretty, pretty long. So there's essentially three new technologies, if you will, that sort of only exist in Vessel of Hatred that really uh, make this build sort of pop off, right? So one is there's a new skill in Vessel of Hatred. It's called Soul Rift. So Soul Rift is a new ultimate skill that basically for eight seconds, you corrupt uh, nearby enemies dealing X percent damage per second. Notice that damage per second. Every 0.25 seconds of this duration, you absorb the souls of up to three nearby enemies, gaining two essence and a barrier for 2% of your max life. Uh, for five seconds. Fully specking it out, you get Supreme Soul Rift, which basically every soul absorb increases your damage up to 30%. This is a 30% multiplier, and that will persist for five seconds after Soul Rift ends. And then Prime Soul Rift, enemies inside that big AoE circle uh, become vulnerable for two seconds. And then when damaging enemies affected by Soul Rift, uh, you have 5% chance to absorb their soul. So every, everything you cast has a 5% chance to basically gives you some barrier. And as you'll notice here on PTR, you can put extra points into ultimate. So we, we fully cap Soul Rift with five points. And every single point you put in obviously gives Soul Rift more damage. It decreases its cooldown. Now, obviously, that's really good on, on its own. Soul Rift is probably going to be used in a load of Necro builds, not only because it gives that 30% multiplier, but because it gives you essence over time. But what's also coming with Vessel of Hatred 2.0 uh, is a new unique helmet called the Unmaker. And this is one of the mechanics that the build revolves around. So soul restoration is increased by 0.5 seconds for every 30 essence you spend while it's active, up to eight seconds. So potentially, if you fully juice out the Unmaker, you fully maximize this potential, you get a 16 second soul rift. On top of that, soul rift deals 200% of its shadow damage per second to surrounding enemies for every 30 essence you gain while it's active. Now, the one thing to note about that is it's only essence that's missing. So it doesn't give you 200% damage for every essence you gain above your cap. It, it has to be missing for you to gain it back. So right away, we're gonna be looking for ways to spend as much essence as we possibly can. You've probably already seen a variation of this. It's from another uh, streamer slash necromancer. His name's Microbioboy, uh, where he uses Bone Spirit to basically dump all his essence to get maximum uptime of Soul Rift. And that's really good. It's going to be really strong. It's a really cool idea. But this build isn't just about getting big hits with Soul Rift. It's a big part of it. But really what this build is, is a shadow damage over time build. We're doing loads and loads and loads of damage over time. We're scaling damage over time. And we're doing something we rarely get to do in Diablo 4, which is to not scale crit. We're not scaling overpower. I mean, we do a little bit. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. But we're not specking any gear into it. The third piece of this puzzle is, so there's there's rune words now, quote unquote, rune words now in Diablo 4 uh, coming in Vessel of Hatred. The thing that makes this pop off, and again, I thank you for the community for pointing this out to me. I wish I had discovered this on PTR because it really would, I think, made the build uh, sort of finish. But there's a rune called Xan, X-A-N. Your next skill cast will be a guaranteed critical strike and overpower. And yes, damage over time abilities can in fact overpower. They can't crit, but they can overpower. However, Soul Rift's effect, you deal 200% of your shadow damage per second to surrounding enemies every 30 essence. That is a hit. That can crit. And it can overpower. Now what happens with these rune words is you sort of, you fill up a bar and then you get like a second before uh, they go off. So 
What's going to happen is we're going to, you know, cast skills with cooldown. We'll get into that in a minute. And then eventually Sun will be ready to cast. And then when it's ready, we're going to like sort of stop casting everything. And we're going to use our Sun rune on our Soul Rift. And that's going to make Soul, Soul Rift not only crit, but overpower. And it's going to do insane amounts of damage because we are stacking shadow damage over time, which makes our soul rift do a ton of damage. And so all we're really focusing on is literally just spamming as much blight as humanly possible. And we're using the Evan Piercer to do that. We'll get to that in a second. And then we're going to get seven essence drain per second using this aspect. So we're basically, we're just trying to just eat as much of our essence pool as possible, as fast as we possibly can, while still doing really good damage we're not just dumping it with bone spirit we're we're just going to try to spend it as fast as we can gain it right so getting into the skill tree here uh we put sort of two points into our basic attacks we're never going to use a basic attack in this setup but we have to put two points in to get to the next part of the tree we are fully investing in blight so all five points into blight get enhanced blight we're going to get supernatural blight which means you get 20 percent damage multiplier to the enemies with in the blight now blight is great here because it has a decent lucky hit chance 40 percent base but it also has the second highest essence cost of any uh core ability that necro has sever costs 20 bloodlands costs 15 bone spirit costs the same and then blood surge is the most expensive uh it costs 30 but of course it's not a shadow skill it's not a shadow damage over time skill we are using blight uh combined with the evan pierce now what the evan piercer does is every single time i shoot blight it's going to shoot four additional little blight beams that do uh, the damage of the blight itself, which on PTR is a maximum of 6,230 shadow damage per second over three seconds. So again, shadow damage over time here, we get 351% uh, damage over six seconds using casting blight and blight stacks. So um, you can keep spamming it and spamming it to get more and more shadow damage over time. Same with the, with the Evan Piercer, Evan Piercer stacks. So just keep spamming blight, 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 blight. Now some of this tech you might recognize from the old way we would play shadow.necro. We're gonna spec fully in the corpse explosion. And you might be like, what do you mean? How, why would you spec fully into the corpse explosion when all you're doing is literally just spamming blight? Cause that's all we're doing. We're just gonna be holding down blight, doing as many blights as we possibly can to spend as much of our essence as we possibly can to get more unmaker brock. We're never gonna cast corpse explosion manually, but some tech that we use in our old shadow dot is using the ring of sacrilege soul, which basically lets you automatically activate a corpse uh, explosion once every second. And the black river, the black river basically consumes up to four additional corpses. So five in total gaining 160% damage multiplier and 50% increased size per additional corpse. So once every second, we're going to consume five corpses to get a shadow explosion that does just ridiculous amounts of damage because we're getting up to 30 levels on our corpse explosion so the thing is 429 damage and multiplier from 30 ranks and we're going to show you guys how to do that now for key passive uh in our build planner we're using affliction so affliction is a new key passive in vessel of hatred it basically gives you 15 percent damage multiplier uh, if you have either vulnerable crowd control or shadow damage over time uh, on the enemy, which we have all three at all times. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean it stacks or anything like that, but it's 15% flat multi. There's an argument to be made for Shadow Blight. Uh, we still have to do some testing here to see if the Shadow Blight procs are outweigh that 15% damage multiplier. We'll have to see. But we're also not using the Blighted aspect because we frankly just don't have the aspect slots for it. So for now, we're going to go with that 15% damage multiplier because I, I on paper, it looks better. And next up, we're going to invest into Decrepify. Decrepify causes the enemies to deal less damage. It also slows them. We also go ahead and enhance Decrepify, which makes the enemies um, have a 10% chance to be stunned for two seconds. And that's a lucky hit. And we are scaling lucky here, so this is quite good. But most importantly, Aberrant Decrepify. Enemies hit while affected by Decrepify have a 15% chance to reduce your active cooldowns by one second. This thing's going to fire off like nuts like you're not gonna even believe how fast this thing triggers and again we are scaling lucky so that is insanely good the next ability we're gonna be not specking into but using is corpse tendrils now you might be wondering why aren't we going into uh, plague corpse tendrils because that's usually how we would make mobs vulnerable well now we make mobs vulnerable 100 of the time by using soul rift so we don't actually need the vulnerable rune on corpse tendrils anymore and frankly we don't need to spec into corpse tendrils at all you could make an argument for the blood orbs and then maybe go the blood orb board on the paragon board but right now we just have way better boards and it's just not worth it so right now we don't even have to spec into it and we get this thing down to a 6.76 uh cooldown because it has 17 points 
uh, because we have corpse skills on our gear. We'll, we'll show the gear in a second. But quartz tendrils is a key ability in this build. And I'll show you why. So we have, again, that Zon rune we talked about earlier. The next skill you cast will be guaranteed critical strike and overpower. We're going to use that to cast soul rift. Super important combo. The Zon rune is attached to a Yule rune. So every time we cast a skill with the cooldown, we get 50 offering. So on paper, you're like, okay, well, the Zon rune costs 700 offering and the Yule rune only gets 50 offering. That's 14 casts of Corpse Tendrils with a cooldown of almost seven seconds. So you might think, okay, well, that's going to be, this is going to take 98 seconds to proc one use of Zon. That's crazy. But that's not what's going on here. So assume this is, you know, 2.0. We're getting insane. Watch how fast Corpse Tendrils come back, right? So we're getting a cast probably every second of Corpse Tendrils because of the Crepify procking that lucky hit cooldown reduction. So we're going to be literally spamming Corpse Tendrils nonstop. And every single time we cast it, we're going to get 50 offerings. So this thing is going to be up very, very often. The other thing that I guess is sort of, it might be a bug, but it, it works right now on PTR, is you can cast Corpse Tendrils without anything targeted. And for some reason, that triggers uh, the rune as well. So you don't even need a corpse. I don't know if that'll make it to life, but it is what it is. Now for the smaller passives, all super, super needed for this build. Uh, we're using Hued Flesh. Now Hued Flesh basically lets us generate corpses when we hit a target. And again, uh, we're scaling lucky hit here. So lucky base coefficient is 40%, which is pretty good. Now the reason this is insanely good is because Evan Piercer, even the little blights can proc Hued Flesh. So you can shotgun this thing and get insane amounts of Hued Flesh procs. And the more corpses on the ground, the more corpse explosions that are going to be consumed from ringing our cycle to soul. So the shadow damage over time is going to be nutty. On top of that, we're fully specking into imperfectly balanced, which basically makes our core skills cost more, but deal increased damage. And obviously because of the Unmaker, making our core skills cost more is a great thing. Because the more essence we spend, the more essence we regenerate, and the more soul rip procs we get. Uh, coming down into the next part of the tree, uh, we have a new passive called Necrotic Fortitude. Lucky hit, 50% chance to grant a barrier to yourself for 5% of your max life for 6 seconds. And of course, again, we are stacking lucky hit here. We have a 62% lucky hit bonus. So this thing's going to be going off like crazy. We're also using Titanfall, which is also a new passive. Uh, while fortified, you deal 18% increased damage to elites. So that's 18% multiplier. And we're fortified through the use of one point into Necrotic Carapace. When a corpse is formed from your skills, you fortify for 2% of your max life. And again, like we said... That huge flesh is triggering like crazy. So we're basically generating corpses like crazy. And so uh, we're always going to be fortified through Necrotic Higher Peace. Therefore, we're going to get 18% damage multiplier against elites at all times. Uh, coming down to the next part, Amplify Damage. Uh, we're using Course Aura uh, Aspect on our boots. So we're getting both curses for free. And we're going to be up in the mod's face. So they're always going to be cursed, which is a 12% damage multiplier. We're also using Death's Embrace. Close enemies take 6% 6, 6 more damage and deal 12% less damage to you. So this will always be up as well. Precision Decay is a new passive, which gives us straight up lucky chance, which is, again, like we said, just good. Coming down into our shadow passes, we're going to put one point into Reaper's Pursuit. We get additional points into Reaper's Pursuit using our Evan Piercer. So we can get up to 40% movement speed by just casting a Darkness skill, which is great. We're going to put three points into Gloom. We get additional ranks to Gloom from our Evan Piercer. But basically every rank of Gloom gives you 2% increased damage uh, per ticks. And it can sack up to three times. So every point into Gloom gives you 6% damage multiplier for Shadow abilities. And then, of course, we're specking in the Terror. Terror gives us 9% increased damage, uh, which is a multiplier to enemies who are slowed or chilled and 9% increased shadow damage to enemies who are stunned, immobilized, or frozen. These bonuses stack and apply to shadow damage dealt by your minions. Now, we're not going to be able to chill because we dis we opted for Supernatural Blight, which will give us 20% multi versus the 9% we're going to get from chill. But we're always going to have a chance to stun using the Decrepify. Decrepify has a lucky hit uh, chance to be stunned. So we're not going to spec any points in the Crippling Darkness because it's basically the same thing. But we're potentially going to be able to immobilize and freeze. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the gearing section. So don't rule it out. Finally, we're going to put um, nine more points into one Finality, which is a, a new passive. 50% uh, increased damage for eight seconds after casting Ultimate. We should have almost 100% of time on this. Um, we cast Soul Rift pretty quick coming off the cooldown there with the Decrepify. Because again, the Decrepify... It basically gets shotgun from our Evan Piercer, so the cooldown comes back so fast, as you'll see in the video. We're also specking three points in the standalone. Increased damage reduction 
Uh, by 18%, if you have no minions, each active minion reduces this bonus. We have zero active minions in this setup, so we're going to 18% uh, damage reduction. And then, of course, sacrificing both Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Mages increases their sacrifice bonuses by 60%. And of course, we're fully utilizing the sacrifice bonuses. One, we're using the Reaper Sacrifice to get 20% increased shadow damage, but we're also using the Sacrifice Aspect which says your sacrifice bonuses are increased by 55%, which means we actually get 30% increased shadow damage. And again, that's a multiplier, so that is a lot of damage. We're sacrificing the cold minions to get 20% increased damage to vulnerable enemies, and again, a multiplier. And again, it's being increased, so that's actually 30% increased damage multiplier. And then finally, we're using uh, the bone sacrifice to get 15% increased attack speed, which is actually 23% attack speed with the sacrifice aspect. Okay, so for gearing, this, this is what we're thinking. Okay, so we're gonna have one, so if you guys didn't know, in 2.0, every ancestral that drops has one guaranteed greater affix. That's what I mean when I say GA. So you're gonna see every piece of gear has one star on it. That's what we're gonna recommend you get G8. And then in the threes is where we're gonna recommend you put your master working into. So first up, we have the Unmaker. We have two stars on this because again, I don't know if you wanna pick Imperfectly Balanced. I don't know if you wanna pick Soul Rift. I have to determine which one's more damage. On paper, I would think on Imperfectly Balanced, but we'll have to wait and see. GA one or the other, and Max Rake one or the other. And then in the rune slots of the helmet, again, cause you can have up to four runes, uh, we're gonna use Lith Rune which basically says you stand still for 0.3 seconds, you get 25 offerings. So you can get 75 offering per second. Once you get up to 400 offering, you can cast Vex. And Vex gives us plus three to all skills for five seconds. Obviously, plus to any skills is amazing for the setup because we use Soul Rift ranks, we use Decrepify ranks, we use Corpse Explosion ranks, we use Blight ranks, we use Corpse Tendril ranks. It gives us more cooldown. So ranks is just insane for this setup. You could also make a case for the Barbarian Enhanced War Cry because it gives increased movement speed. And I think it's a 35% damage multiplier, which is no slouch, but I think plus three ranks will actually probably be better in the long run. We'll have to play with that, but those are the two options. Uh, on the chest, you want to GA armor because we need that high armor roll and then fully masterwork corpse explosion because, you know, more corpse explosion ranks, more damage, and then, of course, life on our last slot there because life increases our overpower damage. For tempers, we're going to get total armor. We need total armor here to get that armor up to 1,000 in World Tier 4, or, sorry, Torment 4. And then on some of this gear, you're going to notice I have things like this one has Soul Rift Duration. All the pieces have Soul Rift Duration on it right now. The one thing I'm sort of debating right now in this build is if I hit, you know, a Zon Rune Soul Rift, so it's guaranteed crit, guaranteed overpower, and then I proc the double damage from my offhand, I probably am not gonna wanna recast Soul Rift. I'm probably gonna want it to play its whole 16 second duration out because that is gonna be doing just loads and loads of damage. I don't wanna recast it. <clears throat> so that's what I'm thinking of with the extent, extended duration with Soul Rift, because if we can extend the duration by 100% on gear, more than 100%, 120%, we could just let that thing play out and just get nutty amounts of damage. However, with that route, we won't have 100% of time on finality, which is 50% damage multiplier. So this is something we want to play with. Uh, the other option is to drop Soul Rift duration and do Worldly Fortune. So you want to do Immobilize, because again, through Terror, on the passive tree, that's 9% damage multiplier. You're gonna to wanna to do freeze, that's 9% damage multiplier. And then with the last one, you could do something like corpse tendril size, that's always gonna be good. For gloves, we're gonna hit a GA blight and try to master work that if we can. Uh, also attack speed, uh, because we wanna to try to get that 100% attack speed cap, which we can do if we fully GA. So if you can get GA attack speed and blight, that's huge. So again, we wanna get to 100% and we'll talk about that in a minute. Max life, because overpower, Shadow damage over time uh, on one of our tempers. Shadow damage over time, it double dips for us. Let me explain why real quick. So not only does shadow damage over time give us more soul rift damage base, the dot part of it, but also gives us more soul damage or more soul rift on maker damage. So very, very, very strong and a, a shadow setup. And again, tempers, you could play with the worldly or you could do solar iteration like we're thinking uh we're using the sacrifice bonus on gloves which we touched on earlier we're wearing the blood moon reaches uh and we're gonna fully ga and master work the life roll the life roll again will give us more overpower damage but this says we do 100 50 percent increased overpower damage to enemies affected by our curses that's 150 multi for our uh guaranteed overpower crit 
Soul Rift. So that is just an insane synergy. This is only 166% additive damage. So I would not recommend uh, Master Working this. But if you can hit a GA on it, great. Boots, super important slot as well. We're going to want to hit a GA armor roll because that's going to again, going to get us into Torment 4. And then we're going to fully Master Work Corpse skills because one, that gives us more cooldown on Corpse Centrals and two, more damage on Corpse Explosion. And then finally, max life, because max life, more overpower damage. I personally like evade granting movement speed, but if you're still sort of new to Diablo 4, you might want to go evade charges because it lets you avoid more. But we do have an oh shit, get out of jail free card with Blood Mist, so it's not a huge deal if you hit with a CC. Um, for tempers, we, again, we want movement speed here because we're actually dropping movement speed as a stat. Because, one, we get movement speed from Ring of Sacrilegious Soul, but two, because of Reaper's Pursuit. So Reaper's Pursuit gives us 40% uh, movement speed, so we, I feel like we can afford to drop the movement speed on the boots. Maybe you want to have a different pair of movement speed boots that you would do for, like, you know, Hell Tides and stuff like that. The, the easier content, but for pits, you definitely want to drop that movement speed. But yeah, fully master workhorse skills, max life, more damage. Again, soul rate damage, or you could do a mobilize a freeze chance to get that terror damage. Black River, super important part of this build. One reason Black River is so good is the implicit rolls attack speed. There's no other weapon that does that for the Necro. But also because of the ring slot, we get the temper that says resource generation while wielding a scythe. So we get 25% versus uh, the normal 18%. So wielding a scythe, good. But really important here is you're going to want to try to hit a GA Corpse Explosion chance to deal double damage. Just hitting the GA alone is 97.5% chance. That is insane. So basically what that means is every single time we consume a corpse, we're consuming five corpses because of Black River and it deals, you know, 160% damage multiplier times five and happens automatically every second because of Ring of Sacrilegious Soul. And then you multiply that times two because of the Black River double damage roll that is insane and we'd want to fully masterwork corpse skills here i don't know if for some reason on uh max roll the master working doesn't work for corpse skills but that should go up to uh plus six you could also make a case for fueled by death here uh getting up to plus six because fueled by death would increase all of our damage so that's the soul ref damage the corpse explosion damage the blight damage the heaven piercer damage i uh, make a strong case for that on evan piercer we want to go uh ga and fully masterwork into chance to cast projectiles twice I did make feedback that this should 100% be up to 100% because there's the Greaves of the Empty Tomb and you can get Sever 100% chance, more than 100% chance on the boots. So it doesn't make any sense to me that Blight wouldn't be able to cast twice. I feel like this is just outdated. Uh, so hopefully they'll make that change. 67% chance with full GA and Masterwork. Probably be pretty hard to hit, but totally worth it. Uh, of course, we get Plank Ranks of Blight and that's going to be flat damage for our Blight. Uh, Plus the ranks of gloom is just flat shadow damage across the board. That's actually a, what 12, 18% damage multiplier just from three ranks alone. So if you hit that one more time, it's 18%. It's huge. Uh, for one of our ring slots, we're wearing a normal ring. Uh, ideally, we'd want a GA and attack speed and fully master work it because we want to hit that 100% attack speed cap. We're really close to it. Max roll again, life, um, more overpower damage. And then we just want to hit a flat intelligence roll. Intelligence is just more damage. You could also make a case for doing damage over time instead of intelligence. It does increase our solo damage. It does increase all of our damage across the board. It's just not as good as shadow damage over time. Shadow damage over time, like we said, double dips for us. So whichever you can hit works just great. Uh, for tempering on that, we want shadow damage over time. Like I said, double dips, super, super good. And then resource generation while wielding a scythe. We're wielding a black river, which is a scythe. So that's super great. Other ring, this is going to be hard to get probably chat. But ring of sacrilegious soul... Um, ideally plus seven or, you know, GA plus masterwork corpse skills that makes our corpse skills and go way up. But of course, hitting lucky would be great. Hitting grim harvest would be all right. Movement speed would be great. Uh, but most importantly on your ring of sacrilegious soul, you need to get that one second corpse explosion. One second. Don't get a 1.1. Don't get a 1.2, 1.3. Gotta be 1.0. Got to be super duper important. And then finally, our offhand. The great thing about offhands in patch 2.0 is the base lucky. 38.3% chance on 800 item power. That's insane. Uh, we want to fully temper chance for soul rift to deal double damage. And then if we can hit a uh, GA, max life would probably be a pretty good choice here. But any one of them would be acceptable. And of course, the other temper would be shadow damage over time. Now, for Paragon... Uh, they made some changes to Paragon in patch 2.0. You basically 
can only pick five Paragon bars now. And those cho choices are meaningful, but like you basically end up just getting everything. So I'll just briefly go over these Paragon boards because this is super min max. We spent a lot of time on this. Um, and every choice is super impactful and we'll explain exactly why. So first up, we're going to do control. Control has a really, really good placement. You can get up to 90 points of intelligence and that first board, which gives you 741% added to damage to crowd controlled enemies and everything's going to be crowd controlled because of at very least they're being cursed and our curse slows. So that's super duper strong. You also get a 20% damage multiplier if the additional bonus is met. And then finally you get a almost 30% damage multiplier when you turn this glyph to level 46, if you guys don't know what that means. So basically uh, the new glyphs have a level of 100 uh, and at level 15, the range gets increased. And then at level 46, the range gets increased again and they turn into legendary uh, and they get that legendary bonus. So every glyph gets like two multipliers now. Uh, next board will be Wither because of the legendary node. Our shadow damage orb effects have a 5% chance, deal 50% bonus damage. Of course, it's easy to get that 1200 int cap. So we at the full bonus, it gets 45% chance uh, to deal 210 bonus damage. That's every damage over time that we do which is just nutty. Uh, you can, of course, follow the path along. You can see the, the build down below. But on this board, we're going to go with Darkness. Darkness gives a 494% shadow damage additive. Uh, you can get up to 90 int on this part of the board. And of course, uh, you get 20% multiplicative for the legendary bonus and 10% uh, damage reduction uh, for the additive bonus. After that, we're actually going to go into Bloodbath. Uh, in the Bloodbath board, we're going to pick up the exploit node the exploit node gives us 400 percent additive vulnerable damage um and 20 percent legendary bonus to vulnerable and 10 percent additional bonus so 30 percent damage multiplier which is just nutty now i'm probably gonna get a lot of questions on this fluff why didn't you go essence essence gives 1054 additive plus 30 percent multiplier on its own well i'll tell you exactly why the reason exploit is absolutely the best choice here is because it affects everything, right? So it's going to affect the damage from our corpse explosion. It's going to affect the damage from our soul rift. It's going to affect the damage from our blight. It's going to affect the damage from our Evan Piercer. It affects everything. Whereas the corpse, whereas crit damage would only affect the Unmaker proc. So it would only be getting that, while it'd be great for that, this will give us flat damage across the board. So exploit is 100% the best choice. And you'll also notice in my weapons here, I have 54% vulnerable, the Grand Sapphires, instead of Amethyst, because vulnerable is always up, and the Amethyst only get 48% damage over time, whereas the Sapphires get 54, so it's just more damage. So vulnerable is really, really good in this build. 100% out time of vulnerable, so that is easy peasy to keep up. Of course, also on this board, we have the legendary node Bloodbath, 70% damage multiplier for overpower, and again, that's only for Soul Rift. But there's really not a lot of better options out there. You could pick up uh, Blood Begets Blood and pick up the Corpse Tendrils node that gives you damage per <clears throat> uh, Blood Orb pick up. But then you have to like walk around and pick them up. So I'm not crazy about that. It is a good option though. You could also do Scent of Death, but you'll always have corpses on the ground. So you're basically only picking that up for damage reduction, which isn't very good. Uh, moving into the next board here, we pick up the Flesh Eater. This is always up 100% of the time because again, Black River consumes five corpses at once which is exactly the amount that we need to get full 40% multiplier. So this build is GG. And this board, we're going Scourge because this is the highest amount of int we can get from one glyph. And again, shadow damage over time double dips for us. So it's very, very good. We get to 521% shadow damage over time. Um, and again, that double dips. So that's super, super strong. We also get 10% um, increased damage multiplier and then a 20% increased multiplier at the legendary bonus. Super strong. And then lastly, we're going to pick up the new Paragon board, which is called Frailty. Curse enemies take 10% increased damage from you and your minions. This goes up to 40% for each second they're cursed. This is pretty much going to be always going to be up because, again, we have Curse Aura, so everything's going to be cursed all the time. And then for this board, we pick the new Glyph, which is called Eliminator. Now, Eliminator is insane because it gives 40% damage multiplier to elites, which is just nutty. But every single normal node that we picks up gives us 36 int at max level a, a paragon or glyph 100 so we get 374 intelligence from this piece alone which is just a lot of int that is a lot of int more importantly 40 percent elite damage which is just too good not to get so one thing you're going to ask probably straight away for a lot of you guys trying to get in the world tier four is how did you get res capped 
how did you get armor capped? Because I'm nowhere near that. My resistances are a total joke. Why are you not wearing diamonds in your gear? Why are you not wearing skulls in your gear? Right? So this is where it gets tricky with this Paragon board. So one is we're specking into poison condition. So this gives us 45% poison resistance. We also spec into shadow resilient down here at the bottom and the nodes around it. So this gives us 40% shadow resistance. So basically that caps our poison and shadow with enough intelligence, which we get a lot of in this setup. And since poison and shadow are both capped, we can put a ruby, a topaz, and a sapphire in our jewelry, and that'll cap us for the other three stats. And then of course the GA armor on the chest, the GA armor on the boots, plus a tempered total armor roll. And then again, through the skill tree, we get plus two points into spike armor. That 10% will finish off our armor roll. So we'll be armor capped and all rest capped. And we don't even have to put on materials might. But again, this will be min max. This is going to be tricky to do. Uh, you can absolutely blast torment three for as long as you want. Now to get into T4, you're probably going to want to throw on materials might, but to min max the build, what you really want is a sort of a perfectly rolled legendary chest. So you can get that plus seven, actually what plus eight corpse explosion which is just nutty plus the tempers that you really really want but yeah all said and done if we say we ga attack speed on our gloves we ga and masterwork attack speed on our ring that's going to leave us at 65 percent uh, attack speed and then because we're using the sacrifice bonus and the sacrifice bone golem that'll be 23 percent more attack speed so all said and done we'll have about 88 percent attack speed so will be 10 percent attack speed under the cap and that's pretty darn good. Uh, so for skill rotation, you know, this is live, so I can't show you exactly what that skill rotation is, but we're going to pop into, say, our pit level 100. We're going to spam corpse tendrils before we even fight anything to get our Zon room up. Once we have the Zon room up, we're going to go into the first mods we see, and we're going to hit our ultimate, and then we're literally just going to sit there, and we're going to spam uh, Blight as fast as we possibly can. Uh, we're going to try to hit corpse tendrils off cooldown, it's going to gather mobs up for us, but more importantly, it's going to get our Zon rune ready to cast again. And then when we, we see that Zon rune is ready to cast again, if we don't have a really good um, Soul Rift proc, we can cast Soul Rift again, try to get that double damage uh, from our offhand. And that's it. Big, huge Soul Rift. Making sure you cast uh, your Soul Rift on the rune of Zon. You don't want to mess that up because we are spamming Blight. You know, the worst thing you could do is use your Zon rune on a Blight Overpower, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but you definitely want to save it for your Soul Rift. That's basically going to do it for the video. I know that was like a lot to cover. This video probably turned out way longer, but there's actually like a lot going on in this build. So one good job, Blizz. This, this build is going to be great. Now, a couple of things we hope happens before this goes live. Uh, number one, we would love for the base damage of Blight to go up. We would love the damage for of Evan Piercer to go up. We would love the damage of the base corpse explosion to go up. All those three things combined, I think, are super needed in the game. But I do think that this will be uh, able, capable of doing pit 100s. We were doing pit 90s, pit 95s before we knew about this overpowered tech on PTR. So I do think the damage is there. I know this video was like super duper long, uh, but there's actually a, a lot going on here. So I was pretty impressed by the complexity and the layers of it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed and can appreciate those those nuances and those layers as well. If you guys don't know, I have been back streaming pretty consistently. So, you know, if you guys are interested, check it out. I'm on twitch.tv lord underscore fluffy. Hopefully this gets you pretty hyped for Vessel of Hatred. I know it gets me pretty hyped for Vessel of Hatred. Hoping for some great things uh, that they haven't announced yet as well. As always, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions. We love you guys. Peace out.